Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video, I'll be using a range of techniques to create my cute honeycomb resin coasters. Due to having many requests, I'll also be showing you the process of creating and cutting the vinyl text which you often see me use in my projects. If that sounds good, stay tuned and enjoy the video. <laughs> This video is sponsored by HTV Ront, suppliers of a wide range of vinyl, tools and equipment to suit your vinyl crafting needs. They have a website, htvront.com, with a wide range of products, special offers and member rewards. But if you prefer to shop at Amazon, you're in luck because they have an Amazon store too. With affordable prices and excellent quality, HTV runs are well worth a visit, so check out the links in my video description and on with the project. There's quite a lot to show you in today's video, so I'm going to keep each part quite brief. Now, to start with, I've got my hexagonal mould from Moulds and Shapes, and I wanted to have the gold edges on the coasters when they came out. And so I wanted to brush on mica powder onto the edges of the mould. I drew around a coaster which I'd previously made to get a template, and then I used that template to create four hexagons from transfer film, which I use for my Cricut, but you could just use sticky backed plastic like in Fablon that you use for covering books. And the reason I've stuck that on is so that I don't get mica powder all over the base of the mould. And once you've used it, you can take it off, put it back onto the backing paper and use it again next time so you're not wasting it. Once they were in place, I used a soft brush to apply my high gloss metallic pigment. It's the metallic gold pigment from Resin Pro and I'll leave a link in the description. These moulds from Moulds and Shapes work really well for this technique. Although some moulds don't, you need them to be the type of mould where the pigment just clings to it. They've got almost like a static effect to them and the pigment you know, it sticks really well, but I have found that this method doesn't work with all kinds of moulds. It depends which kind of silicon they use to make them, I think. After applying the gold powder, I use some really strong duct tape just to stick it onto the film and then pull to take it off. Rather than trying to put something in there to peel it off, I didn't want to damage the mould and I didn't want to knock any of the pigment powder off the edges. So that's the best way to take the film off. Okay, let's make some honeycomb. Now, I have these silicon trivets, which I bought ages ago because I liked the look of the honeycomb pattern in there and I never got around to using them, so I'm going to use them today. Now, I've mixed up some resin. I think it was Art Pro from Resin Pro and I'm just adding some of the Sahara pigments also from Resin Pro. I've got gold and I think that's the bronze in there and I just mix them together until I got something that looked a little bit like honey. And then it was just a case of pouring the resin onto the trivet and using an old store card to smooth it over and make sure it was all filled. Whilst that was curing, I started on the coasters. Now, the honeycomb which I made isn't very deep and I didn't want it to be right at the base of the coasters. And so I decided to half fill my coasters with resin so that there was something to attach the honeycomb onto and the honeycomb would rest closer to the surface of the coasters. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so I've got Art Pro resin and I'm going to use that same pigment as before that I used on the edges, the gold one, and just half fill with that. It really didn't matter too much what colour I used because it will all be covered up later on. I just wanted to raise the level of the surface of the coaster ready for the honeycomb. 
Once the resin was fully cured, I took back those pieces of transfer film, which I cut into hexagons before and used as the masks on the mould, and I cut them in half. And then I applied the sticky back plastic to the honeycomb, pressed it down really, really well, gave it a really good rub and then peeled it back carefully with most of the honeycomb stuck to it. Some bits stayed in the mould, but you can just carefully use some tweezers to put them back into position where they need to be. Then I laid it on a coaster which I'd made previously just to see what, whether the size was right and took off any of the little bits of honeycomb that would have been sticking over the edges so that I knew that the piece would fit nicely into the mould. Next I mixed up some two part epoxy glue and I just dabbed it onto the surface of the honeycomb and then put the honeycomb into position and it was as simple as that. The reason I used the two-part epoxy glue was because it's very quick to cure and because it's nice and thick. I didn't want to use anything that was runny that would go down into the cracks between each little hexagon of honey. I wanted it just to stay on the surface, be nice and strong and dry quickly. So the two-part epoxy glue worked really well for that. So after about 20 minutes when the glue had dried enough and I could tell that the little bits of honey wouldn't come off the base of my coaster, I peeled off the transfer film and they were ready. I was really pleased with the way they looked at this stage. I really thought it does actually look like real honeycomb. And I forgot to mention before that that other mould is also from Moulds and Shapes and it's the coaster stand to go with these coasters. Next it was time to add the creamy white colour between all the cracks and because it's got to get into all those little cracks I used eye crystal resin from Resin Pro because it's a really thin resin and I thought it would be best for getting into the cracks. I've used a little bit of opaque white pigment paste, I don't know why I didn't start filming when I used the pigment paste but I didn't <laughs> so I started with that and then I added some interference gold into that to give it a little bit of a shimmer and also to make it more creamy rather than a stark white colour and then I just poured it over the honeycomb and used my store card again to smooth it into all the cracks, just like if you're grouting tiles in your bathroom. <laughs> I tried a few different ways of cleaning up the leftover bits that were left on the top of the honeycomb, but I found in the end that my finger works best, with my gloves on of course. At this stage I thought it might end up looking a little bit too plain so I poured a little bit of the white mixture into a smaller cup and added some of that gold and then added it to the edge of the coaster just to give it a little bit of interest. And once that was done I left it secure. And now it's time to create my text. I went onto my computer and into my Cricut Workspace program and I went to the shapes and got a hexagon. Then, once I had the hexagon, I made it exactly the same size as my coaster. The hexagon is just a guide to help me with the placement and size of my text. It will be deleted later, so it doesn't matter what colour it is. I've made it pale grey just so that I can see my text on top of it a lot better. Then I went on to images and typed in a search for B. So what I'm showing you at the moment is more of an example because after I'd finished filming this I actually changed my mind on which B I was going to use and I also changed my font but hopefully this will give you a good idea of how I do it. So when I'd finally made up my mind, I clicked on it and clicked Add to Canvas. I wanted it to be sitting in the corner of my coaster between two words at an angle. And so I changed the size and the rotation until it was in just the right position. Next, I clicked onto the text icon and typed in my text and then 
I needed to go to the font and change the font. And if you're anything like me, it takes you ages, just like it took me ages to choose one. And then I only went and changed my mind anyway. But this will give you an idea, won't it? <laughs> Then I resized it until it looked right, just in the same way as I did with the B. And I duplicated it and then did the same thing with the other words. And yeah, it's, that's a, as simple as it is, really. I'm not going to go into too much detail with it because I'll make the video too long. But I think you get the idea. Once you've got your text right, you can duplicate it and then just change the text. So it's going to be the same size and it makes it nice and easy. Right then, so after all that, I decided to change my font and I changed the B, but yeah, I think it looks better now anyway. I wanted the B to be a little bit simpler because it was quite small and I thought if it's too detailed, my Cricut might really struggle to cut it out. So yeah, I simplified it a bit and I preferred that font. It was a lot better. So anyway, once it was ready, I went over to the Make It button and clicked on there. And then I clicked on that option where it shows that you've got it on a mat. And then here it brings, brings you to this screen which shows you whereabouts on the mat it will be cut and it was a bit close to the edge for my liking I didn't want it right at the edge so I moved them all down a bit before clicking continue next I clicked on browse all materials typed in vinyl because that's what I'm going to be using and there's so many different ones to choose from I just scrolled down to the bottom and chose vinyl just kept it simple and my blade's a bit old, so I on the pressure option, I clicked more so that it gave a little bit more pressure just because my blade is a little bit old. If it was a new blade, I don't think I would have needed to change that. As I said at the beginning, this video is sponsored by HTV Ront and they sent me some of their black vinyl and their white vinyl. They're the permanent ones and they're smaller than what you might be used to seeing with vinyl for crickets. They do have the full size rolls. These are just the smaller option. And as it turns out, that size was just perfect for me because I only needed a thin strip. I cut a 30 centimeter length which is just the same size as the mat and I stuck it down. Now these mats have got an adhesive surface, it's got its protector on at the moment so it's not sticking but yeah once you take that protector off it the vinyl will stick to it and stay into position but I do like to add a little bit of masking tape around the edges just in case it doesn't stay stuck. Next, I fed the mat into my Cricut machine. I've got the Cricut maker and pressed the C, which means you want it to start cutting. Next, it's time to peel back the film that you won't be using off the backing sheet and kind of do it at an angle so it's really pulled back almost folded back on itself and I find that that works better I was really starting to be impressed with this vinyl at this stage I've used other vinyls before and I've never tried the HTV run vinyl and usually it, it the lettering starts to come off as you're pulling off the excess and it can be a real pain but this nearly all of it stayed on and I only had to press the lettering down again in a couple of places so I was really impressed about that. Once I'd removed all the excess vinyl, it was time for the weeding and I'm using this pointed weeding tool and all you do is poke it into the vinyl where the bit, you know, the little bits you don't want in the letters and just peel it off and I tend to just stick it to my finger but I know there's all different um, techniques for this. You can put it onto a piece of tape on the side of your table or something like that but yeah, I just stick it all on my finger 
and it's as simple as that and it comes off really well i was really pleased with how well this final cut sometimes i've had a situation where the blade doesn't quite go through everything and you get your, you have to get your scalpel out and cut bits that it's missed but it had done all of it it cut perfectly and i was really happy with it so now it's time for my transfer film. I've used it a couple of times already in this video, but this time I'm using it for the correct purpose, which is to pick up the vinyl off the backing paper. So I cut it to size and as you can see, it's quite straightforward. I just pressed it down and pulled off the lettering. Then I put it back onto the backing paper to keep it safe until I needed it. Now it's time to add them to the coasters and to make it a little bit easier for myself I trimmed it right down so that it was easier to position it because I wanted my text quite near the edge where the mould is and I didn't want the excess film to get in the way so that's why I'm just trimming it now and then you just peel off the backing sheet and put it into position and press it on just like any other sticker that you might want to use. Before you peel off your transfer film, it is best to burnish it down with a burnishing tool, just like I just did, just to make sure it's completely stuck. And again, when you're peeling off the transfer film, fold it right back before you pull, and it does work better that way. It doesn't start peeling off the, the um, text that you've put on. Once all the text was in place, I just felt that there was still something missing and so I decided to add some resin in like a molten gold effect, almost like it was honey but gold at the same time. And this is a technique I haven't used for a long time and I'm not sure if I've shown you it before either. So this is something different for you to see. Here I'm applying J Diction's UV resin and I'm not trying to be tidy or neat. I'm actually trying to make it look like runny honey the way it's placed. And then just cure it. If you're using J Diction, just cure it for 30 seconds. Um, I found that if you do it any longer, it's not tacky enough. You need it to be tacky for this mica powder, which I used before, to stick to it. Most UV resins, when you've cured them, have got like a tackiness to them and you've got to wipe them with alcohol and it drives people mad and they're always saying, how do you stop UV resin being tacky? And yeah, that tackiness is great for this process, but... J Diction UV resin doesn't get tacky so much, which makes it really good on one hand, but not so good for this technique. So, like I said, just cure it for about 30 seconds and that'll be enough. So, yeah, it's like magic. You just add your pigment powder on the top and you get that lovely bright shine and it looks like molten gold or golden honey. I was only going to show you one, but I find it really enjoyable to watch that mica powder going on. It's like magic. So I'm quickly showing you a little close up of that mica powder being applied. And yeah, I think it's beautiful. I'm calling it mica powder. I don't think it is a mica powder, is it? It's a metallic pigment. Maybe I should call it that metallic pigment powder. And yeah, it goes on really smoothly and it's so bright. I love this pigment. So after that golden edge went on, I was finally content with it. And here's a little close up just to see how it looks. And you can see how that gold that I put into the white layer has spread as well. This gold is a very, very fine one and it floats on the top of your resin if you put it into resin and so you get some really unusual effects. I will put a discount code in the description and a link to that product. So now we're ready for the final layer of resin. Well I say final layer, I do put on a top coat of heat resistant resin as well. So yeah I, I forgot to press record for the coasters. Those coasters have already got a layer of resin in and I'm using the Art Pro resin again and yeah just pouring it on and spreading it around and letting it cure and that's as simple as it is really. 
Okay, so they're cured and we can take everything out and have a very quick look. I will show you them properly at the end when I've got my heat resistant layer on. But for now, you can just have a quick look at how those edges turned out. And yeah, I'll show you how I put together the coaster stand too. I really like getting the gold edges in the way I did it today. I first got this idea from my friend Wendy over at Toon Pish Crafts. Uh, I saw her do it and I thought, what a great idea, because it saves you from using gold pen around the edges and then sealing it and all of that. You don't need to do any of that. So yeah, that worked really well and they look really shiny. That effect does work better if you're using a dark colour inside your coasters. It stands out a lot better. So my edges are a little bit translucent, but not too bad. Right, because I'm a little bit messy, on the coaster holder, I'd gone over those little bits in the mould where it gives you the holes in your finished piece. So I had a few little bits to get off and I'm just also smoothing down the edges with my nail file because there were a few little sharp bits. And then I need, needed to use a knife just to cut out really easily because it's only a tiny little bit going over the top of the hole. So I just took my knife to cut them out really carefully. Right, it's time to add the feet. Now, I didn't quite pour mine deep enough and so they were a little bit loose in the holes, which... It's not bad really, I don't mind that, I'd rather them be too loose than too tight because then you do have a problem. So what I've done is I took some E6000 glue and just put it on the top of the foot where it comes into contact with the base and then put them in and then it sticks and it's not a problem, they're not going to fall out. And then you can put your coasters into them easily. Right, because these are going to be drinks coasters, I needed to give it a heat resistant top coat and I'm using Heat Pro from Resin Pro. So I'm just pouring it on and because they've already got a little bit of a ridge around the edge, which happens in moulds, if you don't overfill them, make sure you don't let them dome, you'll get a little ridge around the edge. And that's really good for when you're put, putting on your heat resistant top coat because it keeps it from running over the edges. That's why I don't have them elevated. I was very confident that it wouldn't drip down the sides because of those ridges. Now, you might be wondering why I didn't just use the heat pro for that final layer while it was in the mould. And the thing is with heat pro is it needs a layer of clear resin underneath it. It kind of reacts sometimes to pigments. And so if I'd have put it directly onto the pigmented resin, it might not have worked quite so well. So I did that clear layer, which you saw me do, and took them out the mould and then added my top coat just to be on the safe side. Okay, so that's cured and they're all completed. I really love the finished result. What do you think? I'm sure there's probably simpler and quicker ways of getting a similar effect, but for me, it's all part of the process and the adventure to try new things. And I think that silicon trivet worked really well to create the honeycomb effect. Before I say goodbye, I would like to say a big thank you to HTV Ront for sponsoring this video and supplying me with such fabulous vinyl. It worked so well and I'm so happy that I've discovered it. Um, yeah, I'll definitely be using it again. So all products I've used today will be linked in the video description along with any discount codes that I may have. And that's it for now and I will see you again next time. Bye for now.